Saturday. Okay. I think Coach is with us. Our post-game interview with Coach Hoiberg is brought to you by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Any way you look at it, buzz driving is drunk driving. Coach, congratulations on this one. I'm just curious how, what you think about how you played versus what you expected maybe to see today. Yeah, I, you know what? I was confident that our guys would come out and play with great energy. That, that was one thing that I really felt good about with this group is uh, and it's a lot of that's just because their competitive spirit. And I thought early on our talking was phenomenal. Uh, I thought our unselfishness, I think 12 of our uh, first 16 baskets were assisted. I thought our pace was really good. Uh, I thought we did a good job with activity with our hands, and that got us out in the break. But, uh, you know, I thought Delano got us off to a really good start just doing everything. I thought he just, you know, you look at his overall box with, uh, you know, points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks, four blocks, three steals. Uh, and made some really simple plays. Lat got us going early with uh, with a couple threes. It was good to get Trey uh, that early one at the rim on a lob play. And you know, again, everybody like I told the team after the game, that was a true team performance. Everybody that stepped on the court made a great contribution, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, coach, I agree, and I lo I love the the lineup you threw out there to start the game, and, and even off the bench, and you have uh, multiple ball handlers at any given time. Talk about uh, with the ability that when, when you guys get a turnover like you did today, it's forced 27 or a defensive rebound. When you have all those ball handlers, talk about what that means when you can get out and transition and really push the pace. Yeah, and, you know, I think that a great example that Teddy had the ball in the middle and threw the lob uh, to Trey uh, streaking down the right side of the floor, and we had multiple plays like that. You know, had, had we been able to make a layup there at the end, you know, it would have been even better. But, you know, I thought our guys did a really good job of just playing unselfish basketball, and that, that's what we've really hit hard on is things don't change now that we're starting to play and games count. We need to continue to do the things that we have stressed to this point that have made us a true team. Uh, and you look at the balance uh, across the board, I think we had six and double figures. Of, you know, Ivan could have finished one of those. He certainly would have been in double figures, and then Thor had nine. And Thor uh, was a, or sorry, Thor eight, Ivan nine. But you know, Thor was huge chasing uh, Crookshausen around those screens. That kid never stops moving. And to limit those threes was a credit to Thor. And I thought our other team had great awareness. The rest of the guys had great awareness of where he was at all times. Huskers win at 102 to 55. We'll take a break and be back and t talk more with Coach right after this timeout. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Husker Sports Network. size inside that you would you would like to have that, that you potentially will have yeah and you know obviously we got tough news on on Derek in the last couple of days and you know I'll just say one thing about uh, Derek just how great he has been since he has stepped foot on our campus and you know obviously we were all hoping for a different result but uh, you know it, it is what it is uh, you know Derek you know I just I can't stress enough how great he has of a job he has done uh, buying into everything that we have talked about to try to get himself uh, to the point where he could play. You know, it's unfortunate, it's disappointing, you know, with, with what happened today. But, you know, Derek's been awesome. He will continue to be great uh, and be ready when uh, the suspension is over. Uh, you know, when I, when I look at our group right now, you look at Delano and Shamil and the impact that they had on the game. And, you know, those are guys that hadn't played. Uh, in, in you know a year and a half so for those guys to come out and uh, you know shake off a little bit of rust I didn't think there was much but those guys uh, had a huge impact on this game 
Um, but, you know, it, it is. I, I, it's a tough lineup to guard, especially when Lat is knocking down shots like he was. I thought Teddy did a really good job of letting the game come to him. I didn't think he forced the issue uh, early. Uh, he wasn't scoring much at the beginning of the game, but then he got it going. Uh, had a really good stretch where I think you see how capable he is of putting up uh, big numbers and scoring baskets and bunches. So uh, really impressed with our guys. I, I thought for you know going all the way back to June, um, you know, haven't played a game since you know a lot of these guys March and, and again the transfers that sat out. Uh, you know, the previous year or so. It was really impressed with the way our guys came out of the gate. And again, it was all about cohesiveness. Uh, those guys were over there pulling for each other. Uh, you know, every, every single possession, we were able to keep the minutes down, which is very important when you play three and four games. Yeah, the, the starters were the bench mob there in the last seconds. The uh, only thing that could have been better is if Brett would have scored, right? <laughs> yeah. I was, I, Coach, I, I, thanks. Uh, we'll regroup uh, here shortly with you. Go okay. ahead. Yep. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you Thanks, soon. Coach. 102, 102 okay. to 55. Robin Washer, you're first. Fred, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, Robin. Nice mask. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, this was your first game against a live opponent. Uh, were you surprised at all with just how well everything seemed to go in all facets? Yeah, yeah, I was. I wasn't surprised, Robin. I, I knew we'd come out and compete. That 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 thing, I was I was absolutely confident in. You know how you come out with jitters and that type of thing for the first time in a real game setting. You just don't know how that will go down. But I did think I, I was very confident that we'd come out and compete. That's just what this group is made of, and uh, you know I was really impressed with how we came out and shared the ball early. Uh, Twelve assists on our first sixteen baskets was a great sign. Uh, you know, 19 assists overall and 10 turnovers. I thought we did a really good job for the most part of making simple plays and taking care of the basketball. And had we finished some easy ones, you know, that very easily could have been 25, 26 assists. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just uh, I thought that group out there played really well together. I thought our spacing was very good uh, overall for the most part. And it was a great first, uh, uh, first game for us that we can build on. And then another quick one. Uh, do you have an update on Eduardo Andre? I noticed he wasn't out there today. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't discuss too much on, on Eduardo. I know, I know there was a release uh, before the game. Um, but, uh, you know, we're hoping to get him back at some point, um, you know, hopefully some point soon. OK, Michael Brents. Hey, Fred, Delano's game today, I mean, is that a pretty good example of what he can do for you guys in terms of just filling the stat sheet or any? Did anything that he did today surprise you at all, I guess? Yeah, that, I mean, that's who Delano Banton is. That, that's why he's going to be so important to this team, uh, because he can do a little bit of everything, especially being as small as we are right now. I thought Delano really competed uh, guarding uh, their foreman, whoever was in that position. And he can front. He's got the length uh, to be able to go up and contest. Uh, he can guard really one through four, uh, you know, being a natural point guard pretty much his whole life. He's, he's had to play a lot of, against quicker guards. but. Yeah, he, uh, you just look at what he did, and, and I thought he really set the tone with his voice out there. Uh, you know, he made some really, really good plays going down a transition, uh, made a great skip pass and to, to, to Trey. He just makes uh, difficult plays look easy, and, and that's, the, that's a sign of a, of a really good point guard. But I thought he played really within himself and under control. Had we completed that lob to start the second half, you know, I think he would have been pretty darn close to uh, – to a triple double, but you know, I thought that Delano. You look at you know the four blocks, the three steals, uh, six assists, six rebounds, fourteen points. I mean, he's, that's that's who he is. He's going to be a stat stat sheet stuffer all year. Sam McEwen. Hey Fred, can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I got you, Sam. Super. Uh, your defense had 16 steals today. You forced 27 turnovers, and I think scored 43 points off of it. I know that the offense looked really good, but I, I was curious what you thought of the caliber of your defense, especially from McGowan's, Banton, and Shamil Stevenson. Yeah, I thought I thought the activity level on the defensive end was exactly where we needed it. I, th I thought our guys had uh, great hands. We got uh, some deflections that led to some runouts, and that's what gets your confidence going. When you can deflect balls and get out in your transition game and get easy baskets, that makes everything else easier. Uh, so, you know, to, to see uh, 43 off turnovers, 29 on a break, you know, that's that's a great sign. That, that's going to be something we have to do because, again, we're not going to be the biggest team here uh, for this first half of the season. So we're going to have to find a way to manufacture points, get deflections, and hopefully lead to some transition baskets.
And you mentioned Thor. I know he had to kind of chase around Cuxhausen all day. Is he a guy that you feel like can do that more often for you guys when you're playing better offensive teams? Yeah, that, that's that, that's just who we felt would be our main defender on, on uh, Cuxhausen just because we felt he's our most disciplined guy and he was able to lock on that hip. We weren't helping off of him and uh, we were going to chase and not switch any time unless it was a, an emergency. And, and I thought Thor did a really good job. If you get on top of him and allow him to get into your body, it's over. And if he's open, it's going in. Uh, you just look at the difficult, you know, the caliber of shots he takes, the degree of difficulty to shoot 46% from the three-point line is incredible. Uh, the kid's one of the best shot makers I've seen, you know, with, the, with deep, deep range. And I thought Thor made him work for everything he got. And I thought Kobe did a nice job uh, on him as well there at the end of the game. Connor Happer. Hey Fred, uh, what do you think about finishing at the rim today, and then general physicality, uh, that type of stuff? If you can hear me, sorry. So, I, I'm sorry. Say, say that one more time. Finishing at the rim, uh, general physicality, anything like that? Uh, fin just finishing at the rim. You said, yeah. I, you know, that obviously wasn't one of our one of the strengths that we had uh, today. Uh, you know, Ivan obviously had three or four from where he needs to kick those out. Uh, you know, that's that's something we've worked a lot on is when you get surrounded inside, you have to make the right play and you got to kick it out. And that's a great time to get an open three. Uh, but, you know, that's that's an area where we, we've worked very hard. We get a lot of attempts. You know, we led the nation in attempts at the rim last year, but we also led the nation in getting our shot blocked. And that was a perfect example of what happened when we didn't kick the ball out and share it and make the right play. Uh, we'll get better. We will definitely get better in that area. We'll do two more. Andrew Ward. Hey, Fred, I just want to ask you about just playing in an empty arena for a live basketball game and then also that uh, video that was played uh, in the pregame of the the, kid, the players' families and stuff. Yeah, I thought that video was absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I credit Luca Virgilio, our, our director of operations, that really helped set that up. I thought that was a great start and really got our guys excited for the game, uh, you know, to see the families out there. You know, I know Teddy got a little emotional when his son – uh, you know, talk there at the end and to see all Ivan's family in uh, France and to see Thor's dad with Thor's Iceland uh, national team jersey on. So, you know, really everything. Lad had his, you know, the whole community was there, uh, you know, wishing him well. So I thought that was a really, really cool way for us to start the season. And we'll finish with Kevin Suits. Fred, how much fun was this? Not only to see your team in a game setting today, uh, but to perform the way in which you guys did. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun, Kevin. I, 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 I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed coaching these guys. And it's just, you know, when you have a group that loves to play and love to compete, I know I've talked about that a lot with these guys. It just makes it fun. And it makes, makes the job so much easier when you have a group that you know is going to come to work every time you step in the gym. Uh, do we have room to grow? Absolutely we do. Uh, but I know these guys, we're going to watch film. Uh, we're going to try to get better at the things we need to get better at. Uh, you know, I, I know we're going to have to execute, uh, you know, against these next two teams that we play against Nevada and, and against North Dakota State. Uh, but yeah, it's it's an enjoyable group to be around. It's a passionate group uh, and they're fun. You know, you see their personalities, how they've come out a, as we've gone along in this process. But this was a huge first step for us to, to play a game like this where everybody contributed. And, and again, it was a true team effort. We'll be back with players momentarily. Thanks, guys.
Okay, guys, we are back with Shamil Stevenson. I'll start with Chris Fastnet. Hey, Shamil, can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right. I guess, you know, just for you personally and for the team as a whole, how did it feel to, to be back on the court and, and playing in an actual game that, that you know, that, that finally meant something? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a little surreal at first. It's been, you know, like two years plus, and, you know, it was just good, man. And once I got... You know, once I got my feet wet, you know, it just it just felt really good, and I love this team. You know, we you know made it, they made it even better because we just played together. So you know, it was just man, it was amazing. It just felt really good to be out there. Uh, Robin Washit. Hey, Shamil, obviously uh, the offense was clicking all day, but defensively, it seemed like you guys really made an effort to be active and aggressive, forcing all those turnovers, scoring that many points off of those turnovers. How much of a priority was that and how much pride do you guys take in your play defensively? Yeah, um, yeah, we take a lot of pride in our defense because, you know, we understand, you know, with this team, we can score a lot. You know, we got a lot of weapons, so we make sure, you know, we don't forget about, you know, the defensive end because at the end of the day, that's probably more important than offense. You know, so they, you know, the coaches do a good job of enforcing that and, you know, we just go out and we just play together, trust each other, you know, and play hard, so. Sam McEwen. Hey, Shamil, did you, did you kind of have a sense of how today would go for you personally? It's been a long time since you played in a, you know, in a game, in an NCAA game. Did you, did you have jitters coming in or did it feel pretty good? And, and how did you feel like things went as the game went on? Uh, honestly, I didn't, I didn't have that many, you know, like jitters. Um, then I guess the no fans played a factor. Uh, it's a little weird, but, um, you know, they made a little intro video <laughs> with our families and that kind of, I don't know, that made me feel really good and just, comfortable I guess and then you know when I got in it was just it was just basketball from there so Chris Bassnett Shamil coach coach Hoiberg has talked about how this team has had great chemistry you know in practices and through the offseason and, and that seemed to you know show through today with the way you guys you know interacted and on the bench and everything I guess how have you seen that chemistry kind of build and is that kind of what we can expect the, the rest of the year from you guys with this offseason? yeah um no, absolutely. Our, our chemistry is great on and off the court, and I mean, it can even it can get better, I guess. But it's like already at such a high level because we've been you know together since June consistently every day, and you know all the guys like each other. You know there really isn't no tension anywhere. Ain't no, there's not no you know groups you know divide divide groups or anything. And so I think our chemistry is just going to continue to rise, and it's going to help us you know even that much more. So, Robin Washington. Jamil, what's it like playing with Delano Banton? I mean, is that like anything that you've experienced having a guy with that size, that length, and just skill set running the show? It seems like a pretty uh, uh, intriguing deal you guys have at the point guard spot. Yeah, no, nah, that's my guy. Um, I love playing with him. Uh, super unselfish, and no, nah, I, I really haven't played with somebody that size or that skill set. You know, it's it's actually kind of it's crazy. You know, we're we're so used to it. You know, we kind of overlook it, but now nah, his skill set is you know it's crazy and. Uh, I love playing with him. You know, he, he gets everybody involved. He can score. You know, he, he's a do it all kind of guy. So, you know, I love having him as a teammate. Any other questions for Shamil? Give me a note in the chat. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you guys. We'll come all back right. with Kobe Webster here momentarily. Thank you guys. Hold mic.
Guys, we are back with Kobe Webster. I'll start with questions. If you've got questions, put one in the chat. But I'll start, in this case, with Chris Bassett again. Hey, Kobe, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I guess just, uh, you know, kind of your overall thoughts, you know, getting back on the court, the, the empty arena, everything. How, how, what was kind of your overview or kind of your takeaway from today? Um, I think, you know, we came out, we've been preaching all, all preseason um, that we're going to have to bring our own energy. And I think we did that um, from the very, very beginning of the game. Um, so I think when we come out like that, when we're talking and, and we have that effort on defense, um, I think we're going to be a, a great team. Okay, we'll go Robin and watch it. Well, you guys have talked about the number of weapons you have offensively, but six guys in double figures today, eight with eight or more points. Uh, was this kind of an example of what you guys had seen in practice where literally anyone can go off at any time? Yeah, definitely. Um, Coach literally said the same thing yesterday. You know, there's going to be nights um, where some guys may not shoot it well um, and other guys have to pick them up. And we have plenty of weapons that can do that. Um, you know, and we have guys that there's, I think, seven or eight of us, you know, that can get 20 if need be, um, if we get hot. So, um, yeah, we have plenty of weapons. And so I think it comes down to us continuing to be unselfish um, and just playing through the system. Okay, Michael Brunst. Kobe, knowing you guys are going to kind of rotate through, you know, a bunch of guys, does it make it a little bit easier for you coming off the bench to know that, you know, you're still going to have your opportunity to, to do what you can? What was, what was the question? I'm sorry, it kind of cut out. Knowing how many weapons you guys have, I mean, does it does it make it easier for you coming off the bench, knowing that you're going to have your opportunity to get in there and, and kind of show what you can do too? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I'm for me, it's all it's all about getting the win. So, if, if it's me coming off the bench to score, if it's me, you know, uh, guarding a shooter as I, I did some today, um, you know, having however many assists, I'm all about getting the win, and I'm pulling for all my guys. So. I'm sure you see me over there yelling uh, plenty when guys were shooting. Uh, when we, you know, we got some fast break dunks, whatever the case may be. So um, I'm just all about the win. Sam McEwen. Hey Kobe, what is it like to have to face the defense of a Trey McGowan's in practice? He was really active today on the defensive end, and then also he's just so active and athletic on offense too. What what are what are opposing teams and I guess in store for with a guy like that? Um, I mean, you said it. He's very active. Uh, the dude doesn't really get tired. Um, I think today was the first time I actually seen him ask for a sub. Um, but no, nah, like you said, he's active on both ends. Super athletic. Um, I think, you know, his, his has long arms. Uh, you know, he can be very disruptive. And in practice, uh, he's definitely definitely can be annoying. Um, but, but, you know, he makes me better. So um, I appreciate it. Kevin Suits. Kobe, just a few days ago, your teammates said that uh, you know they were just excited to play. And for you guys to get on the court and perform in that uh, that way, shape, and form, what did that mean to you? What was it? What did he say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Kevin, repeat the question, please. Seamus, I'm sorry, but the PA announcer is talking right now. I apologize, Kobe. I know. We usually won't have this problem. Repeat. Hold on. Hey guys, I think this might be it. Hold on, one second. Hold on. Kobe, sorry about Hold on. We're live. Hold on. We have some PA problems. The PA guy's too loud, guys. Okay. Hey guys, this might be it. I'll Ken or Kevin, give me a call. And we'll. Can we try right now? There we go. Kobe, thank you for your patience. Sorry about that. My question is, for you guys to finally get on the court and then perform in this fashion, what does it mean to you and your teammates? I uh, mean, it means a lot. Um, you know, since we stepped foot on campus in, in June, uh, we've been looking forward to this moment. And I think Coach um, has done a great job in preparing us. You know, he's um, basically preaching, you know, we're preparing like, like we have a full season. Um, and so, um, to see the work that we've put in, um, the way we've you know become comfortable with one another, um, and to come out and display it like that, it, it was a great feeling. 
thank you guys. Obviously, we'll, this will end today's presser. We'll be back tomorrow. Obviously, no game after us, so we'll be good. Kill Mike's. <laughs>